As the saying goes, no one can hear you scream in space. And for the most part, this is true. Sounds are classified as vibrations of atoms and molecules that travel through a medium such as water or air. Since space is a vacuum devoid of the molecules needed to generate noise, sound has no way of traveling through it. However, recent studies have found that the answer may not be so simple. Space is full of matter, especially in between the stars. There are massive clouds of gas, dust, and debris, which may be remnants of dead stars located in regions where new stars are most likely to form. Some of these pockets of interstellar gas are dense enough to carry sound waves. However, we humans are unable to hear these sounds conventionally. Modern research has made breakthroughs in our quest to understand the sounds of space. Want to know what the haunting and mysterious void of space sounds like? Stay tuned to find out! Whenever an object moves, it pushes the molecules in the air closest to it. Anything from an exploding firecracker to the vibration of guitar strings can cause this effect. This process starts a chain reaction where these displaced molecules start colliding with their neighbors. This reaction travels through the air in the form of a wave, and when it reaches our ears, we perceive it as sound. As these sound waves pass through the air, the air pressure in any spot they interact with will fluctuate. This is the same as how water gets shallow and deep as waves pass by. The time it takes between each fluctuation is called the sound's frequency. This frequency is measured in units called hertz, and 1 hertz is equal to 1 fluctuation per second. A sound's wavelength is measured by the distance between each peak of these high-pressure fluctuations. This means that sounds that have longer wavelengths will have lower frequencies and are perceived as lower pitches. In any gaseous pockets in space, the sound within will be of a very low frequency for our ears to pick up. This classifies these noises as infrasound. If somehow our ears were able to pick up these sounds, we would hear some truly fascinating noises ringing through certain parts of the universe. A supermassive black hole located 250 million light years away at the center of thousands of galaxies is responsible for emitting the deepest note we have ever observed in the known universe. In technical terms, this note is classified as a B flat. It sits at about 57 octaves below middle C. This makes it a million billion times deeper than the lowest frequency sound that our ears can pick up. To put things into perspective, the deepest sound you may have ever heard cycles at around one oscillation every twentieth of a second. The humming being emitted from this black hole cycles at around one oscillation every ten million years, and this sound has been playing on a massive scale across the depths of time itself. This observation was first made thanks to the Chandra X-ray Space Telescope by NASA. It was able to spot a pattern in the gas that is filled in the Perseus Cluster where this black hole is located. The pattern looks like ripples in a pond, made up of rings of light and darkness. According to astrophysicists, these ripples are minor traces of a sound wave that is incredibly low in frequency. The brighter rings are thought to be peaks of the wave caused by high pressure on the gas, while the darker rings are probably troughs of the sound waves. This is because the pressure on the gas there is lower. This deep humming sound is carried across galaxies thousands of light years away, but it can only travel as far as there is gas to carry it. This is the reason why we can't detect this sound here on Earth. We can only observe its effects on the gas clouds it travels through. If we look at the Earth itself, it even makes some noises that may travel into space. This is caused by the shifts in the Earth's crust. Every time one of these shifts happen, it produces a deep groan which emits in the form of a low-frequency sound. The effects are more pronounced during an earthquake. The shaking of the ground can send vibrations into the atmosphere. The frequency of these vibrations can vary between 1 and 5 hertz. In the case of powerful earthquakes, the infrasound waves are powerful enough to penetrate the atmosphere and go up to the edge of space. There's no obvious way to determine where the atmosphere stops and space begins. As you travel upwards, the air starts to get thinner until there is none. When you get above 50 miles high, the air at this extreme altitude is 59 times thinner than the amount needed for audible sound waves to travel. However, this does not stop the longer infrasound waves from making it through. In 2011, the northern coast of Japan was rocked by a devastating magnitude 9.0 earthquake. Across the planet, seismographs picked up how the sound waves it caused were able to pass through the entire Earth. Additionally, as the Earth shook, it also set off low-frequency vibrations in the atmosphere. These vibrations were detected as far as 167 miles up in the air. They were picked up by a low-orbit satellite of the European Space Agency called the GOCE. 
The sensitive equipment on board the satellite detected displacements in the surrounding atmosphere, making it one of the rare instances when the sound of the Earth was observed traveling into space. The first 760,000 years after the Big Bang was a time when the universe was growing rapidly. If we were around back then, we would have heard it happening. This is because during those years, the matter in the universe was still packed together rather densely, allowing sound to travel through space. This was also when the first photons were starting their journey across the universe as light. Today, this light reaches us as a faint glow, only observable thanks to modern telescopes. This light is the oldest observed in the universe, and it also carries with it a recording of the oldest sound in the universe. As sound waves travel through the air, thanks to the oscillations and pressure, the ones that travel through the early stages of the universe cause differences in temperatures. Thanks to these temperature variations, scientists have been able to use the data to recreate what the universe must have sounded like when it was expanding. However, some adjustments had to be made for it to be audible to human ears. Launched in 1977, Voyager 1 and 2 are two of the most faraway man-made objects in space to date. Their decades-long journey has finally brought them to the edge of the heliosphere. The heliosphere is the absolute edge of our solar system, a desolate area of space where the sun has no influence. Traveling in the interstellar medium, the probe has picked up a strange sound. This sound has been linked with a possible pocket of ionized gas in the path of the probe. It was picked up by the plasma wave system on board the probe, a tool that is used to measure the density of electrons. The narrow frequency of the sound made it sound faint and monotone to our ears. While the closest estimate anyone has of the cause of the humming sound is interstellar gas, no one knows for certain where it is originating from. The strange noise is speculated to answer questions about the mysteries of interstellar space. One of these is the effects the heliopause and interstellar space have on each other. As the probe continues to explore the great unknown, more data over the years may hold many clues to the origins of the hum. An impressive feat considering the probe continues to function on such unforgiving environments relying on technology from the 70s. Contrary to popular belief, it turns out space does have a sound of its own. It's just not audible to our ears. If we were able to get close enough to the massive celestial bodies in our solar system, we would find that each of them has a unique sound they emit. The magnetic fields of Jupiter, for example, would emit a crackling sound, and Saturn's radio emissions produce a creepy noise akin to a synthesizer soundscape. And who knows, maybe one day we may even pick up a transmission from other life in the universe. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you liked today's video. Please hit the subscribe button for more exciting developments about our quest to explore the great beyond. If aliens did contact us, would you be excited or scared? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.